We welcome you to our <clears throat> online service here at the New Central Church of God. Thank you for all that tuned in, and we hope and pray that you will have a good service uh, this morning. Just a couple of announcements. The camp forms here are available on the mail table uh, and still on the schedule. This camp, as far as I know, if there is any kind of change, if you filled out the, uh, the, the forms and send in the registration fee, the fund will be refunded to you. That happens. Second of all, the uh, services on the YouTube will be available at uh, 8 o'clock on Sunday morning, as usual, and uh, we hope that everybody will turn in uh, to, to tune into that, and uh, we hope you have a good service this morning. This time, Margie Malton will play the preview. saves those who are crushed in spirit. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you all the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. You will keep in perfect peace him whose mind is steadfast, because he trusts in you. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of my Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. This time we're going to sing a song, Blessed Assurance, and if uh, the coin board is going to be on the board behind me and you can sing along at home with me as the song is played. Blessed is the Praise 
God has always been close to people realize that people are trying to, they've been trying for years to do that, to get take that away from us. We pray and continue to be strengthened for each one is praying for the uh, responsible people to take control of these things, knowing that the uh, present administration has a lot of things to do, a lot of, a lot of uh, important decisions to make. Just be with him, making him pray. God to direct the uh, peace of Israel, too, and pray for those individuals there as they uh, deal with the problems around them each day. God to direct uh, Prime Minister Yahweh also as he's dealing with this individual problem. God is this morning, folks. Realizing that this is a uh, time we live in, this, uh, it's kind of like, like a chaotic piece, uh, time of our life. So we pray, Father, you will make that a, a, a life, a time of life that uh, will be peace with you. It's, it's many times what I've told the disciples that uh, peace is, they, they give from me, Jesus Christ. God is this morning, Father, to realize that each day that we live. And all things we say to you, Father, to you honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This time, Dan Mickey is going to come for us and have a song for us this morning. Thank you, Pastor Jim. This song is entitled, I Thirst. And of course, those are among the final words of Jesus on the cross. I Thirst. Yeah, he made 
This morning we're going to speak on the road to Emmaus. There was a group of climbers who set out to scale a large mountain in Europe. The view boasted a breathtaking peak of snow-capped rocks. On clear days, the crested point reigned as king on the horizon. Its white tip jutted into the blue sky, inviting admiration and offering inspiration. On days like this, the hikers made the greatest progress. The peak stood above them like a compelling goal. Eyes were called upward. The walk was brisk. The cooperation was unselfish. Though many, they climbed as one, all looking to the same summit, yet on the same days, the peak of the mountain was hidden from view. The cloud covering was lit with the crisp blueness of the drab gray ceiling and blocked the vision of the mountaintop. On these days, the climb became arduous. Eyes were downward and thoughts inward. The goal was forgotten. Tempers were short. Weariness was uninvited companion. Complaints stung like thorns on the trail. We're like that, aren't we? As long as we can see our dream, as long as our goal is within eyesight, there is no mountain we can't climb or summit we can't scale. But take away our vision, block our view on the trail's end, or ask us to walk a while in faith, and the result is as discouraging as the journey. In the midst of gloom and doom in our lives today, we tend to focus so much on ourselves that we miss the fact that we are still walking with Jesus. We look at the journey of the two disciples on the road to Emmaus, in which they encountered Jesus Christ who had risen. Our text this morning is taken from Luke chapter 24, verses 13 through 35. On the board behind me here, if you want to look also as I'm reading out of the International Version of the Bible. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them named Cleopas asked, and do you know the things that have happened here in these days? What things, he asked, about Jesus of Nazareth, they replied, he was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more is the third day since all of this took place in addition, some of our women amazed us. They went up to the tomb early in the morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that he had been seeing a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said. But him they did not see. He said to them, How foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets had spoken. Did you not know that Christ had to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he were going to go on farther. But they urged him strongly, stay with us. For it is near the evening that day, the day is almost over. So he went in to stay. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then, he, then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, 
and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on, that, on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke bread. This morning we're going to look at three of the ways of going to the road to Emmaus. What happened to these disciples? The first thing that happened to them was heartbreaking. The day of resurrection, these two men were discussing the things that had happened that day. Were they just idle stories of these women? Whatever the news, these men were going to Emmaus a seven-mile journey from Jerusalem with a heavy heart. These men were confused about what had happened in Jerusalem. How often do we get confused about an event in our life? Sometimes we sit and talk about that event a lot, but then the more we talk about it, the more it consumes us. These men were consumed with the events in Jerusalem. Verse 15 and 16, as they were talking, Jesus drew near to them, but they did not recognize him. Maybe you could say that their eyes and hearts were clouded by the recent events. Maybe there was some other obstruction that hindered them from sensing his presence. It's like a log jam in a river where one log is caught on a rock or an obstruction and it causes a pileup of all the other logs. Then the logger comes along finds the, the jam, finds the obstruction, and frees and lets the log go freely. If your Christian love has been blocked by sin, Jesus is walking along it and is ready to free you from that log jam of life from your sin. Jesus continues to walk with the men and asks, Where are you? What are you discussing together as you walk along? Today, your life might be confused. And Jesus is walking with you and asking, what's going on with your life today? Jesus shows his care for these men by showing up in their hour of need. As is today, if you feel there is really no place to go, then Jesus will come alongside of you and show you the way. As they stood still, Cleopas, one of them, asked Jesus if he was a visitor to Jerusalem and did not know what had happened there. In verse 18, they went on with their story of gloom about Jesus. They called him a prophet, but not the Messiah. They did not have a clear vision of what the Messiah was. They thought he was one who was going to redeem Israel. What was more amazing was the fact that on the third day, the women had come back to them and said the tomb was empty. Jesus was not there. And they had some of their companions go to the tomb also. And said and the angels said he was alive. But that was probably just a wild tale. Probably wasn't true. But they said that they probably believe something had happened. Not sure what. Maybe someone had come, stolen the body, overpowered the soldiers, they did not believe that he had risen from the dead. How sad. Because he had told them three times before that that he was going to rise from the dead. Second, though, we see the second way to, to Emmaus is heart searching. In verse 25, Jesus had heard enough groan and, and grooming and, excuse me, enough gloom and doom from these men. He said this, how foolish you are. And how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Verse 26, did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? He began with Moses and the prophets. He explained to them all that was said of the scriptures concerning himself. Especially what was the Old Testament offers about the Messiah. At the end of the day, they were getting to a mess and was getting lost. Jesus acted as if he was going farther on 
But in verse 29, they urged him strongly to stay over with them. So we see this third part of the road to Emmaus. It's the heart burning part of it. Jesus had waited to be invited into their home. Jesus was at the table with them in verse 30, taking bread, broke it, gave thanks, and gave it to them. Next verse in verse 31 says, Their eyes were open as they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, Were not our hearts burning? with him, with us, while he was talking with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? Then the scriptures say they returned to Jerusalem and, they, and to the eleven who were assembled there, saying, It is true, the Lord has risen. They told the disciples about the story about walking along the road to Emmaus and how Jesus came up to them and they didn't recognize him until he started to break bread. Jesus had opened their hearts. What a joy. They had not believed. Their faith was weak. Sometimes we are feeling sorry for ourselves, and God has to open our eyes and our hearts to what he's doing and waiting alongside of us, for the things we need to see as Jesus presents them to us. Even in the darkest of hours, God is at work. There's no time that God has ever turned his back. Some people say, well, God, where is he in this virus? Where is he there? Where is he there? So some of us think about that all along. Where are we with God? Are we praying to the Lord Jesus Christ? Are we on our knees praying to him each day? The scriptures tell us if our nation will turn them down and turn, go on our knees and pray, he will bless us. But if we're not going to do that, how can we expect God to bless his nation? He's always at work. God has always worked to make us better believers and further his kingdom and take care of his children. The reality of the risen Christ is our lives can make a difference every day. Open your heart to the risen Christ today. He will heal you. He will heal your life, give you an everlasting life in heaven with him. That's the ultimate goal. That's our ultimate hope as Christians. No matter how terrible things get, how terrible the situations get, Jesus will still be there each day. Ask Jesus into your heart today. And he will make you a new person in Jesus Christ. If you're here this morning and looking at us and opening open your heart to Jesus Christ, ask him to come in to your heart. Forgive me of my sins, Lord. Come into my heart today. I want to be with you in heaven for everlasting to everlasting. The verse two also to remember this week not only those verses we have talked about, but one remember also in 2 Timothy, the first chapter 7 verse is, goes along with this message. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power, of love, and self-discipline. Think about that verse also this week. As you continue on through your daily life, Jesus is walking with you each day. He will never leave or forsake you inside the scripture. Think about that. You are never alone today. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Our Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you for the time we have together. We pray that each one of us realize that we are never alone. You are always walking beside us as you walk along with those two disciples from Emmaus. God, us each day we recognize you and help us each day to be strong in faith and courage to face whatever may be out there for us. We pray for all the people that are watching also that if there's a need out there for them, that you will be able to be with them as they call upon you and fall on their knees and pray for themselves, their family, our nation. All these things need to be prayed for, Father. We pray for them as they do that. God is to make a strong rich day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This time Dan and I are going to sing a closing song here. We're going to see
Thank you. 